The Kakuma camp in northwestern Kenya shares borders with Uganda, South Sudan and Ethiopia. It hosts over 100,000 refugees, with more than 60% coming from war-torn Somalia. The UN Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, is implementing a regional project in six countries, targeting 80,000 vulnerable people affected by HIV and gender-based violence in East and Central Africa. We have seen that giving women the same inputs like men will improve the productivity in, uh, in agricultural sector and addressing HIV issues in Kenya, which is very rampant in Kenya, will also release uh, support the, the, the productive populations in Kenya and will be able to increase uh, agricultural output. These children from Kalabaye Primary School, a host community near Kakuma, are learning about traditional and modern farming techniques, as well as nutrition, business skills and the sharing of knowledge. I like it because it can, it can teach us more knowledge that we can pass back to there to our relatives so that they can also know how to grow it. As well as learning better farming practices, the children can learn how to cope with diseases and how to eat a healthy diet. They can discuss and understand some of the dangers they face in their own lives and how best to protect themselves. The children of Horsi Primary School are learning about entrepreneurship. And with their new business skills, they are using a field school grant to run a canteen selling produce from their garden, as well as items like school supplies. I decided to start this canteen. So this canteen to help us more because when we we are going where we are going to collect some items, then we'll sell at the school. So these learners they are coming to buy our things and we get that benefit profit. Pastoralist communities traditionally pass messages with song and dance, so the field schools integrate culture with agriculture. The junior farmer field school can't solve all the problems, but it does provide the basics for these children. With new knowledge and a better understanding of working together, these children are bringing a new future to Kakuma and Kenya. My name is Marco. I'm a video producer for the World Food Program. I'd like to share with you some of the images I took during my trip to Lebanon where I met people like Saya, here standing outside her new home with her children. She and her family arrived in Lebanon one year ago when they escaped the fighting in Homs, Syria. They pay $200 a month for this apartment, a lot of money for someone that left behind everything apart from a box of children's clothes. Huma arrived in Lebanon six months ago. She left behind an olive plantation in Idlib. It should have been a good harvest, she told me. She can't bear thinking of all she left back in Syria. Huma and her husband can't afford an apartment, so they built a makeshift shelter with beautiful flowers around it. Huma's husband works occasionally as a builder and makes just enough to cover the hundred dollars a month needed to pay for this piece of land, water and electricity. For food, they all receive WFP vouchers, thirty-five dollars a month for each member of the family. The vouchers can be used to buy food from local shops, including fresh products. WFP is expanding the operation and plans to feed 750,000 refugees in five countries. While inside Syria, WFP is reaching about 1.5 million people a month with vital food. 
I made up both names to protect their identities, but their stories are tragically real. Quinoa, cultivated for centuries in the Andean region, has become one of the world's trendiest new foods. With more protein and fewer carbohydrates than equal amounts of corn or rice, this member of the spinach family is now regularly sold in restaurants and health food stores in many countries. Yet here in Bolivia, the world's largest grower and exporter, quinoa has been looked down on in favor of less nutritious imported grains. At first, the mentality was that it was food for the poor people. But in reality, I believe the time we're beginning to understand that quinoa has many positive benefits. Four years ago, La Paz businesswoman Pami Cazeda began serving quinoa at her chain of restaurants. She was taking part in a campaign to promote quinoa in Bolivia. Supported by the UN's International Fund for Agricultural Development, the scheme not only involved local businesses, but policymakers, marketing experts, farmers, and Research Institute Biodiversity International. It was hard at first, but now many people are opening up to quinoa, and we're doing well, we're doing very well because of quinoa. One of her best sellers is this quinoa chocolate chip cookie. Her company bakes more than 1,000 a day. Each one looks and tastes the same, and while that might not seem extraordinary, one of the challenges for those working to promote quinoa has been to understand how to create products reliably. It is impossible to create the same product over and over again if you don't start from the same raw ingredients. That is why it is crucial to understand each variety of quinoa and then link the business that needs that variety with the farmer who can produce it in small amounts. But with much of Bolivia's quinoa already destined for foreign markets, finding farmers who could produce specific varieties for local businesses was a challenge. Which is why project staff came here to Lake Titicaca, 3,800 meters above sea level. Small farmers like Elias Vargas and Viviana Herrera have traditionally grown quinoa, but were cut out of the international export market because the volumes they produced were too small. Now project staff are helping them identify specific quinoa varieties, as well as forge links with local food stores, bakeries and restaurants who want to buy it. Now people everywhere are buying quinoa. In La Paz, they're selling it in the markets. For that reason, we are able to sell our small quantities. And with that money, we can support ourselves. Ironically, with more money to spend, families here are also beginning to eat more imported foods, just like their city cousins. But here, too, helping them understand the nutritional benefits of eating quinoa, as well as different ways to prepare it, seems to be paying off. Before, when we didn't know that quinoa was so healthy, we sold it and bought noodles. But now that we know that quinoa is so good, we don't buy other foods. Now we clean the quinoa and make soup out of it. We make juice, cakes, everything out of quinoa. There are more than 3,000 varieties of quinoa found in the Andes, many capable of surviving extreme temperatures as well as high altitudes. Understanding the differences in these varieties will undoubtedly lead to increased consumption and a brighter future for these Andean farmers.